in unity of the spirit can we just say father thank you for bringing us together again we are grateful to you for your grace that you have enjoyed for how you have sustained us to this point in the year lord we are grateful to you come and appreciate your sustainer appreciate the great i am the lord god of heaven and the earth say a word of thanks to him he is your lord beside him there is none else he is faithful and just wonderful father the great provider the mighty awesome one thank you daddy thank you daddy we worship you in jesus most precious name we give thanks in jesus most precious name we give thanks lord we give you the glory because there is no one like you to us in life we acknowledge you again as our strength our shield our refuge and our hope for the future be lifted up for all the wonderful things you've done for us thank you for admissions of your children thank you for healing thank you for deliverance thank you for your covering and protection for all that you have done to keep on to keep us for 11 months in the year we give you praise in the name of jesus father we look up to you for a word this morning lord speak to our lives speak to break us speak to mold us speak to frame our life speak to give us direction speak to bless us speak to deliver us in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus most precious name we pray let's be seated you are blessed Well, before I go ahead, I, I know that uh, this new couple came purposely to show their face. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, permit me to introduce to you Mr. Emmanuel Ulukola and Mrs. Olubukola. Ulukola. They are brand new couple. They got wedded on on 16th of November. They attend the Chapel of Grace, but by the grace of God, I happen to be their mentor, so they feel they should come and show themselves to me. After the, wedding. the Lord will bless your union. The Lord will keep both of you. The Lord will defend you. He will make you fruitful in the marriage. The Lord will advance you. As you have entered into marriage, God will multiply your blessing. God will baptize you with wisdom to walk together in the journey of life. In the name of Jesus. And I use you as a point of contact to many who desire to get wedded. I declare may they be favored. May the Lord show up for them in the name of Jesus. So you welcome to Jesus Center. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. I'll be ministering this morning on a message that is titled, Getting God to Act in Your Favor. Getting God to Act in Your Favor. You can make it shorter and say, Getting God's Attention or Securing God's Special Attention because favor of God is not just ordinary attention <clears throat> but our concern is how can I get God to act in my favor as I minister this morning may the Lord show you favor <laughs> are you there I say may the Lord show you favor may the Lord open the heavens upon your life may the Lord pick you up and make you a showcase of how great he is in life in the name of jesus 
So when we're talking about God acting in favor of somebody, we are talking about God breaking every rule to help. We are talking about God doing the best for you in life. Because when God shows kindness, he brings people out of obscurity and position them at a realm they could not imagine. Favor of God is a big thing when he's specially directed to a life. And I pray that God will remember you by name and send help to you from heaven. God will not leave you alone in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to look at three cases today. And uh, my goal is to let you know that there are things you can do beyond, beyond praying. In general principle, we pray to God, we cast our care upon him because he cares for us. So prayer is a notable key step that we can take in life to gain God's favor, to secure answers to prayers, have a problem solved. But we found that many times people pray and it appears God is not answering. That's why you need to pay attention to this. I know you've been praying from January to this point. What do I do when I've prayed? It's so important for a child of God to know who his God is when the Bible says the people that don't know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. Now, in the knowledge of how great and mighty God is for a child of God, he comes up boldly to take certain action when things look tough. A child of God is not supposed to submit and give up and say, I keep enduring. I accept the verdict. What are people that were at crossroad? What did they do with God differently that made them draw of God's power to help? That's our business today. And what can I do myself? Where am I missing the intervention of God? Let's turn our book, uh, Bible for 35. I say I'm bringing three scriptures to you. The first one is the book of Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15. And I read from verse 21. Matthew 15. And I start reading from verse 21. Then Jesus went out. <coughs> From there, and departed to region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. May the Lord have mercy on you. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Son of David, my daughter is severely demon possessed. So the problem of this woman was that she had a daughter that is demonized under demonic affliction and was a big headache to her. So she didn't have a personal problem. <coughs> or even if she had, had the problem it was not a problem that could have pushed him to begin to see God's mind, but he has one concern challenging her peace. And you know, when we talk about demon possession, 
medical science don't understand that. Human knowledge can't handle them. And I know very well that this woman must have taken one action or the other but can't find answer. And so she resolved to take the matter to Jesus. Now look at that scripture, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out. When they tell you that somebody cried, I know Bible won't exaggerate. This is not an ordinary approach. When you see somebody who come to you cry, people can come to beg you for help. People can pray anyhow, anyway. But when they say somebody cried out, like when they told you that Bartholomew cried on the top of her voice in the midst of crowd and decided today my condition must change. He said people came to him and said, Mr. Man, can you, you are shouting like a bushman. Look at everybody. They are behaving decently. The Bible said the more they warn him, the more Bartholomew cried out. And that outcry got Jesus' attention in the midst of multitude of people and Jesus stood still. For you, may the Lord stand still today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus stood still. Now listen where I'm going today. They are talking about demon possessed lady. One of the key terrible challenge in life is interference of demonic spirit and power over the life of people. Are you hearing me? And I want to tell you that people take them for granted when you are sleeping and your sleep is not sweet. Every time it is nightmare. And we wake up, you know sometimes we are so spiritually foolish you don't do anything about it. You just keep going. You pray no matter your prayer and prayer and nothing is happening. Even when we talk about nightmare, I know they are of different grade. Somebody is sleeping in the dream. They come to feed you every time with wrong food. And you finish them before you ever wake up. You know there are all kinds of terrible experiences in dream. Praise the Lord. We are starting, I have three cases to present to you today. One, we're starting from spiritual problem that people don't joke with. Or we seek answer in the wrong places. Spiritual problem. Some can be there for years battling with it. They know something is wrong. But they are still very psychedelic about it. It will go on its own. Some, it is doses of immorality in the dream. I mean, terrible doses of affliction of sex in dream. In my little years in pastoring, a lady came to me. Every time she's about to be lifted in a beautiful career, she will sleep and saw that some men will come into the room in their numbers and surround the bed in the, in the revelation. And they will rape her one after the other. It's not one person. In dream, you are talking about demonic affliction. Demonic oppression in life. They will rape her around and immediately they finish with her and moved out. She will wake up. Whatever progress is coming stops. And that experience brought her down from another location in the country to see me. Because the mother felt she must come. And I am pleased to tell you today that we minister to her. God not only stopped this, she was able to move forward in her profession. She was able to get married at an advanced age. She has children 
and she's still moving higher today. Now listen, where I'm going simply is that there are traumatic, demonic affliction. Praise the Lord. What do I say, everybody? A lady got married, and the first night they got married, they had to sleep in the family house. And right in that sleep, on the bed, in a dream, a woman appeared to her. You welcome to this family. But listen, you can't bring anything out of here if you don't submit to me. Very short dream, and the thing went. And over time, the woman will appear. Very old, wretched woman in a dream. The woman never appeared to the husband, so the husband won't be aware. So even if she's telling the husband, somebody is telling me she's the, the man may think this, man, this woman is a problematic woman. You know, there are some experience you personally go through that people can't understand. We don't know the kind of dream she says she's always happy when she sleeps in my house. As I'm ministering to you today, if there be any area the enemy is afflicting you supernaturally, may the covenant of the blood break through them in your life. Yeah. I say may the covenant of the Lord give you deliverance in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So there can be terrible demonic problems. And this is what this woman was going through. You may find that everybody is reading. They are understanding. You read well. But you just find that you, get, you are not gaining much from your reading investment. <laughs> A boy said, very brilliant boy from secondary school, entered the university, and as he was trying to register, you know, in those days, you know it's not, Electronic registration, lining up here and there and registering. Say something struck him at the back of his head. And he said, From that day, it appeared as if the head is empty. Empty. Reading, struggling, th nothing, nothing there to retain any information. He cried out. I once, at my age, in the university, was with a, a, a colleague who was in medicine, medical school, precisely dentistry. And you know, spent 11 years in dentistry, when the same fellowship. When they are doing an exam, praise the Lord, when they are doing an exam, the invigilator may just come and say, you are cheating. And they will collect his script. She wasn't cheating, no. Then they will just come and say, he's cheating. And they will seize his script. That exam is a problem. And spent 11 solid years repeating, sometimes two years a class, three years a class. And then woke up. May somebody wake up today. In the name of Jesus. I say, this is not normal. I don't want to die here. And came for deliverance. And in that deliverance, it took some days. Every 12 midnight praying for her. And somebody's eyes was open in the group and saw that they pack all kinds of things in a basket and put it on his head. It's a revelation. You know, somebody can carry a load and you won't know he's carrying anything. He's walking about as a normal student, but there is a load of things that anybody will ever hate that he's carrying about. And so with that revelation, they said, well, let's declare that it be lifted off his head and burnt with fire. So prayer went on with fasting and all that and went back graduated. Amen. Went back to become a success. So, that's the kind of problem the woman here had. She wouldn't understand the invisible affliction 
knew something it was wrong with her daughter and came to the master. The ultimate answer in life. Now all this demonic thing can work with sickness and diseases. Am I communicating? You just see that you go to the hospital, they do all the tests here and there. They say, nothing is wrong with you, madam. Let's do another. They keep rolling you from there. They keep trying drugs. The doctors know they don't understand the problem, but they have to try something. If you say it's headache, okay, give him headache, but we can't see headache in the test. Once you see a lot of meeting going on, everybody saying, well, what do I do? Like, we can't see. He said he's having this, but this thing doesn't show that. Then you must know where to go. Amen. Getting God to act in your favor. Now, this woman came to the Lord with a cry. When we are under demonic affliction, you don't pray, Saka. Don't copy people to pray their prayers. Take a better step of faith. Listen to God for what to do. This woman was prompted to go to the master. God can prompt you, set yourself apart. When they were leading you in prayer, I know you remember three things. If you forget them, too bad. The person leading us, they talk about your faith, talk about instruction, talk about obedience. I mean, you can remember the three instructions. The, when you are prayed, many of us don't take time to do what? To listen. You don't listen to God. You are, are prayed. What is God asking you to do? That's where, Getting God to act in your favor. What do I do? I, my life must not continue like this. I have a God, almighty God as my father. Then to make matters serious, look at this woman. She's not even of the covenant. Praise the Lord. This woman by that scripture was a Canaanite woman. By normal structure, this woman was not supposed to approach Christ. But she moved against that tide. Amen. Because something in her said, whatever structure they put on the way, this problem must go. I'm going to him. When I get to him, I will demand for his mercy. I'm not qualified. But mercy can do what? Can qualify me. At this point, this four point is showing you that Anybody can get God to act in his or our what? Our favor. Even somebody who is of the world, if he recognizes that the answer is in the hand of God and have enough faith, can get God to act in his or our favor. So an unqualified woman came forward, broke the barrier. And you see, that's why you must understand that plea. Have mercy. Don't look at structure. Have mercy. Don't look at racial discrimination. And look at the response of Christ. Let's look at that scripture deeper, deeply. Verse 23. But he answered and not a word. And his disciple came and urged him, saying, Send I away. For she cried out after us. Number two, you see there that that cry was not once and for all cry. It was a persistent what? Hey, damn alone. Persistent what? She didn't give up. She knew something has said, my answer is in his hand. And until he answers me, I will not leave him alone. So, to, I mean, when you talk about the disciple, this woman didn't have the faith of the disciple. Send her away. That's the, that's the instruction. They said, and he answered her not, and his disciple came and urged Jesus. They urged him. You see capital H. They urged him saying, send her away for she cried out that is a nuisance to us. You know, sometimes we can look like nuisance to pastors. Or to anybody, your keeper, I'm not yet well. And I know God can make me well. 
She's crying after us, disturbing us. Send her away. This woman won't listen to them. This woman didn't get offended by them. Just in faith, strong in God. And decided something must happen. Verse 24. And he answered and said, that's Jesus answering and said, I was not sent except to the lordship of what? Of what? Everybody. So the anointing on my head is not for the Canaanites. And the woman heard that's total physical disqualification. But did she accept that? She rejected that verdict. The next verse. Verse 25. Then she came and worshipped and said, Lord, do what? Uh -uh. She behaved as if she didn't hear Jesus at all. She pressed other. Mercy in the first. The next one, Lord, do what? Help me. Why? If you don't help me, who else? Lord, if somebody told you, well, I'm not anointed to pray for you, you will first be angry. To hell with him and his anointing. I mean, this woman didn't hear that. Her concern is that this demon possession must be conquered. I pray for somebody, may the Lord awaken your faith. May the Lord deliver you from every obstacle to your miracle. May you prevail by the covenant of the blood. May the authority in the name of Jesus work for you. In the name of Jesus. You will see she said, no, help me. All the same. And that is a deep knowledge of God. The air power of the air place. Every structure may be against me. Oh, I, have, I am actually the one that caused this problem. You know, sometimes when you want to ask God for help, they will tell you, and something weakens you from seeking God's help. Even if you have caused a problem, if you don't seek help, who will, who will deliver you? The woman persisted and got the Lord to lift help. May the Lord lift you today. In the name of Jesus. And let's move deeper. Verse 26. But he answered and said. It is not good to take the children bread. You see the progression of that discussion. I'm not sent to you. Help me. Now okay to help you. We shouldn't take the children bread and give to who? Who is the dog there now? Who is the dog there? The woman. If it were you, what will you do? <laughs> Verse 27. And she said, yes. Dog in the wa, Abby. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Even the little dogs eat what? The crumbs which fall from their master's table. When you are seeking help, don't look at men. Don't allow distractions. Don't look at church. Look at God who can help you. Am I communicating? This woman took every obstacle out of hell. This is a great obstacle from grade 1 to grade 2 to grade 3. The woman never allowed it to stop her blessing. She plugged into it all the same. She made her case and God answered that she needed. May the hand of God rest on you. May you get to a point when you know God alone will help you. In the name of Jesus. When he said that, now look at Jesus. May you pray and break through. So at this point, the lady has broken through. Verse 28, then Jesus answered and said to her, Oh woman, <laughs> great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was ill from that very hour. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Now, if the woman stop at the first time, will he get? Will she get the answer? At the second gate, we see those are gates. Listen very carefully to I wrote it there here. God has that plan to solve your problem. Every challenge of our life has God's what? Answer. But many times there are gates to those answers, and those who know how to unlock them. Get out of the problem. Many of us are superficial when we are looking for answer from God. We joke. We play. We are not serious. Our problem is not sufficiently strong in us to hold the Lord responsible by whatever action we are doing. This woman had the Lord as the only answer and was not going to take any distraction from anywhere. And she prevailed. Can someone say, Father, help me to prevail? Listen, your condition can change. That problem nobody knew you are going through can be removed. Because you are even not a Canaanite now. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. But many times we joke. Many times we wear ourselves. When you are dealing with God, you are still wearing yourself. Had and be humble and be looking for what he will say. And then get your miracle and keep praising him all your life. From this point, God lifted her. And she went back rejoicing. You will have a testimony. Before this year ends, something unique will be done in your case. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's move to the second point. That's Second King chapter 4. We are looking at the scripture. And all I'm doing is to simply analyze them. Second King chapter 4. Second King chapter 4, and we are going to be reading from verse 1 through verse 7. A certain woman of the wives of the son of the prophet cried out to Elijah, say, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. Praise the Lord. That's a very loaded verse. Number one, this is telling you that somebody who fear the Lord and love him can have problem. Hello? Somebody who does what? Who fear the Lord, who love the Lord, can have what? Can have problem. But that problem is not the end of their life. If they can call. And in this case again, we saw another woman here. What did the woman do that is similar to the one we read in the New Testament? Everybody, can you remember what she did? She did what? She cried out. She cried out. I have problem. Man of God, because that's the representative of God in their midst then. She cried out to Elisha, one of your servants who love the Lord, fear the Lord, dead and the wife. She has some terrible death, and my children are going for it. Will you watch us like this? Praise the Lord. So, as a fine child of God, you can have challenges in life, but you equally have a God who can help you out. Let your faith, you know, in fact, even if you have a problem you can solve yourself, first tell God about it before you take action. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have? In your house. And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. 
Now, you will see that in every case that I'm raising today, there is an interaction. What I say there is everybody. The greatest problem of today's children that we pray to God, we come to sing to God, but we don't interact with God. We don't expect God to even speak to us. Neither are we speaking to him. Neither are we asking him questions. Interaction. To draw instruction. To know what to do. Every outstanding miracle in the Bible came by divine interaction with instruction on what to do because every case have their peculiar action. And don't forget getting God to act. After you have prayed, what do I do to get God to act in my favor? Now, people that do this are people that can stay glue, who can step aside, who can listen to God. Many of us are so to ordinary principle rather than moving beyond it and walking in the spirit to know what God wants you to do. Superficial mind cannot work at this level. When your Christianity is not deep, when you are possessed of your brain, you cannot, you can't even draw, you can't identify the voice of God because your mind will be caught up in your knowledge. What do you have? And she says she has a jar of oil. And then instruction came. Then he said, go borrow vessel from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessel. Do not gather just what? Instruction. Nobody can say, what do I do with the vessel? Hello? Hello? What do I do with what? With the vessel. As all counter instructions are coming in the, in the internet, on Facebook, all kinds of people that are trapped in life, giving instruction, terrible instruction. Don't do this again. Don't go that. If God says you should go and do that and you don't do it, will you ever be delivered? And that's why the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, are God, people that can listen to the Holy Spirit, not right artifice. People who have a personal relationship with God and can hold the garment of God and say, Father, you must help me. I am your child. Look at that woman say, he was, she was making a case. My husband feared God, loved him. It was creating platform for God to do something about our case. What platform can you create by the way you are working with God? For God to know that you must be helped. Even somebody who had no relation to God told God, mercy. Abby, that's creating platform. Mercy, Father. Show me mercy. If nothing else will work. And at a second degree, he came and said, Lord, help me. You are a helper. Will God deny the father is the help of the helpless? Will he de de deny the father is, is the one who helps people in time of trouble? And that caught God. And God released his help. May you find the help of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Every one of them that I'm showing, three people, the second one now, they were people who had the platform, they had knowledge of platform to get God to show them favor. When you are too superficial, you don't even know what to do. Some of you can't pray for one minute. When they put the, the prayer on the altar, some people can't pray for 50 seconds. You see, they are, they are, they are finished. Because their spirit man is not alive to the seriousness of what they are drawing from God. To understand what the prayer means. It's when a man's spirit is caught up in what he's doing that he takes it serious. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go borrow. The woman went borrowing. He didn't know what other instruction to do. Go borrow. Just dancing to the tune of divine instruction without doubt. Faith. In God, who can bring something out of nothing. Every miracle is a move of God that brings something out of what? Out of nothing. The Bible says, collect things that are not as if they were. That's what the Bible says. 
In the beginning of the creation, the Lord spoke to darkness. Clear, let there be light. Light came. That's the God you have come to. He said, miracle worker. He doesn't work with human brain. If they needed light then, they should have gone to look for transformer. Look for what we call it now. Begin to create uh, hydroelectric city. But he spoke the word of his power and brought forth light. That's your father. Every miracle is a product of faith. It's a product of careful response to divine instruction on the land of that's why we are walking by faith and not by sight we are walking by faith and not by brain walk in the spirit that's those are the instructions when you are, have to do with god because god is a spirit anybody that we have anything to do to him must do it in spirit and what and in truth may the lord give us understanding and so the matter of faith, faith is your life when it comes to working with God. What do I call faith, everybody? It's your life when it comes to working with God. When you don't know how to live by faith, you cannot get the best from God. God can do anything generally for anybody. But when it comes to peculiarly securing his attention to show you favor, on some challenging thing that no man can help you in, you need faith life. You need the ability to take instruction from God. You need the ability not only to take instruction, but also to obey it by your faith. Because sometimes the instruction of God may not make sense. May even subject you to ridicule. My friends say, I hope you are still thinking straight. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. And so, he borrowed them. Don't gather a few. Then she gather everywhere that's available. And when you have come in, you shut the door behind you and your son. Then you pour it into all those vessels and set aside the food ones. So she went from him shut the door behind him behind her and her son and her son who brought the vessel to her and she poured it out now it came to pass when the vessel were full that she said to her son bring me another vessel and he said to her this there is not another vessel so the oil Seized. When they had no place to put again, what happened to the oil? It stopped. Amen. And then the next instruction is that you should go and sell the oil, pay the debt, and begin to go free. Father, before this year ahead, let somebody see you at work. In the mighty name of Jesus. The third one, because of time, that same chapter, Second King chapter 4, we take it from verse 8. Praise the Lord. That's another separate case here now. In looking at another person there. Now it happened one day that Elijah went to Sunem. Where there was a notable woman. And she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was. As often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. Praise the Lord. Do you know that this three story, which gender does he affect? Female. So men wake up and also stay on the lane of miracle. Am I hearing you? Go and look at most of the miracles is on the lane of women. When there is a problem in the family, many times it's the, I mean, I think that lady that was possessed must have a father. Abby? Hey, that me alone. Because even Jesus has a father, but the father was nowhere to be found. We should not be like these Bible stories. We want to begin to see men who are in the spirit, who are alive to God's purpose, and who can promote a process for God to act in the favor of your family. Is somebody listening to me today? 
I have seen women until they find answer they don't stay. They pray. They disturb pastor. They fast. Why the man is eating ever as if he's not concerned. Even now in the work of the ministry you see women more more zealous, more committed, more alive to the purpose of God. Why men are what? Are sleeping. I have no apology. I'm speaking as the Holy Spirit led me. Praise the Lord. These three cases, we didn't find a man. And God is many times looking for man. Their, their husbands are sleeping. Some are dead. May you not be dead while alive. In the name of Jesus. It's a serious message, getting God to act. Actually, when men champion the cause, God gets glorified faster. But all of, that's why when you get to a crusade, you see more men, go to any church, more women, more women everywhere. Because when a woman don't find the answer, she won't pretend. But what you find with men is that they have 20 answers, a problem. They will hang one on the leg, hang one and put a bag on them. And be dancing as if there is nothing. As if there is nothing. Wake up and become instruments in God's hand. May the Lord find you on your duty post. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So here he say, a woman has husband, but the woman is at the forefront. Now, here, what is happening? The woman created room in their house. In fact, every point of need of the man of God, the woman talked to the husband. Can we do this? Can we build this for him? Can we do this? The man is sleeping. Do a life. Sleeping, do a life. You must make up your mind. I will be an outstanding man. In the hand of God. I will be an instrument to bring miracle to my family. I will be an instrument to impart my community. I will be a hand for God. To get his glory made known. Amen. Amen. Verse 9. As she said to her husband. Look now. I know that this is a holy man of God. Who passed by us regularly. What is the man looking at? Hey, that me love. It is the wife that recognizes this is a holy man we should help. Sensitivity of the spirit. And they have big problem in that family. They've been married, they are growing old, they have no child. The man is still coping. But somebody is now planting God in their home for a divine attention. By the time God came for this family, they were not even asking God. It was God that was saying, what's your problem? Let's look at it. God was asking, what is your, what do you lack? What is your problem in this house? I must attempt to it. But before I get there, look at verse 10. Say, please let us make a small upper room on the wall. Let us put a bed for him there. And a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. Praise the Lord. You see the woman organizing the life of a man of God in their house. Every need of a man of God was loaded in that. You know, when you see men of God, they wake up to read, Abby, a table, a lampstand to read. That's revelation. Platform for the man to never to lack what? It's not just housing the man anyhow. Creating, knowing that a man of God must be somebody who wait on who? On God. Who listens, who studies. Table, lampstand. Everything needed for the man of God to fulfill his ministry was provided. It's a woman. And soliciting the help of the husband. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do this. And thank God the man didn't argue. Praise the Lord. At least submitted to the instruction. 
Amen. May the Lord help us. Man, can you say, God help us? Amen. Young boys in the house, can you say, God help me? Amen. I'm not gender biased. I'm a man. Who, you know, I've been in the ministry for some time. I've seen that. Even when you talk about help for ministry, men, men, I'm sorry, women many times help. When we finish the last retreat, I don't know how many people were in my car when we were because we left last. And I was forced to say loudly as if there were no women in the world, some pastors will be stranded. What do I say? We'll be stranded. We have big problem. Why men are looking at you, women are acting. They are doing what they can do to make things work. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Getting God to act. May the Lord bless our home with women like this. May our young girls grow to be great women like this. In the name of Jesus. So they built the man a small apartment and furnished it with all that was needed. And then, as they were doing it, everyone was also thinking about their problem. And so they called the woman. Come here, woman. What's the, the woman never told them she had any problem. Then the man of God asked Gehazi, go and find out what had came. They have no child. Though. And that was how the word of God came about a child. Amen. And they had a child because they created they created the reason for God to do something. God is saying, I'm not going to live here until I do something. There are steps you can take in life that will make God feel you can't be left where you are. You must be moved what? forward. Anytime God's, God's, you, you are concerned about things relevant to God. There are many of us who help people the natural way. But we are not moved by who God is around what we are doing. This one was moved by God is in our house. It's a, it's a man of God. We must take care. And never say, a life project too must become heavenly what? Heavenly project. Amen. And God stepped into a matter. At this time now, they weren't even asking them to help. They are not asking God. But by their action, God stepped into the matter. And to make the story funny, verse 21 and 22, something happened, the baby died. <laughs> Are you with me? You know the devil can be very funny. A gift from the Lord, the devil wants to take it away. Praise the Lord. Verse 7 says, But the woman conceived that the man of God said, And bore his son, when the appointed time had come, of which Elijah had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to his servant, Carry me. Sorry, carry him to his mother. That's the father. Give me instruction. He cannot carry his own child. Carry him to the mother. God, mother is the miracle worker. There are irresponsible men in the Bible. <laughs> carry him to the mother. She busy working. Dead child. Praise the Lord. Verse 20. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on a knee till noon. And then what happened? Everybody died. You can imagine the trauma the woman went through. And what happened, verse 21 and 22, is so important to her. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him, and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, well, the other one was not even aware the baby is dead. Then she called to her husband and said, 
Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. As he said, it is well. Amen. Verse 24. Then she sat with a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Camel. So it was... When the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant, the ass, Look, the Sunamite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, It is what? It is well. Amen. I pray. May answer of faith proceed from your mouth. Amen. When you are talking faith, when you say it is not well, it won't be well. When you say it is well, what will happen? It will be well. You know, we've been teaching faith. This is a practical follow-up on those teachings. Action of faith is that it is well. I will make it. Amen. God will lift me. God will make a way where there seems to be what? No way. I'm going to flourish. Amen. He who made the way in the wilderness will make a way for me. Who parted the Red Sea will surprise me. That's the word of faith. It is where? This is somebody under a terrible distress of a dead child, the only child. Can she say, it is what? It is where? Verse 27 now. When she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by his defeat. You see action. He was not just reporting. Hey, you must do something about it. She caught him by defeat. But she came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone for her soul in, is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehaz, get yourself ready. And take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greet you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord live, and as your soul live, I will not leave you. So he arose and did what? Oh, take a staff and go in a staff, Lily. You are John Lockback one. Are you really desperate for God to touch you before the year ahead? I'm asking that question. How many of you is desperate for God's touch? You can see a desperate woman. That was good enough answer. Take a star. Just go. Thou Gehazi, go. Say, no. <laughs> you must follow. And the man rose and followed. I decree today, may the Holy Spirit breathe upon your life. To do something that will get God himself to act in your favor. In the name of Jesus. What am I showing you here? Please listen very carefully as I'm rounding off. And I repeat the summary of this message as we pray. God has a plan for every aspect of your life, including your problem. God has an answer to every challenging thing that you are going through, known by anybody or not known by them. As an answer. Know today that God cares. In many of the problems we have, something we tell you, God has forsaken you. It's not there. It may be the sin you committed in 2010. That's why this is coming. Yes. Let it be the same. 
But God still care in that terrible condition. He knows you by name. And he has answer to that problem. Amen. Amen. The biggest problem in life is getting God to give you the answer. Many times, we are not really, really serious. And that's why in life, you see, the problem, A, B, C, have the same problem. C comes into the problem, gets itself and move. The other one, C, C, inside. Because somebody is joking. In fact, sometimes, the problem you think is little may be the creator of bigger one. Am I communicating? And so you keep wasting time on the spot. You see them here, every one of them, and every one of these problems were solved uniquely. There is no universal answer. Am I communicating? God usually uniquely attends to issues. Where we miss it in life that he anointed that person, he must anoint me also. Who told you you need anointing on your head before God solve your problem? We look for parallel things to do. Many times, all you need is a unique instruction. You take the action, and the problem is over. Can somebody rise up and say, Father, awaken my spirit, awaken my soul to be in chill with direction from your throne. Can you say it better, Lord? Awaken my spirit, man. Awaken my soul and give me direction. To flow with you in the name of Jesus. Can you take that prayer in a minute? I want to see whether you understand what I'm saying. Lord, awaken my faith. Awaken my spirit. Awaken my soul. To get you into action in my life. Deliver me from dead spirit. Deliver me from careless spirit. You know why the women were on date? The husband was updated in the knowledge of what was happening. Say, keep me on date with you on every matter in my life. Awaken me, O oh God. Awaken my faith. What I need to do to flourish. What I need to do to reign in life. What I need to do to have dominion. What I need to do to excel. Guide me. Give me hearing ears. Deliver me from all distractions around my life. Is somebody praying, deliver me from all distractions around my life. Father, help me. Keep me focused on you. Lord, keep me focused on you. And anoint me with grace to chase you into my breakthrough. Anoint me, O oh Lord, with grace that I may chase you into my miracles. Like it to my son, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can somebody lift your hand to God and say, Lord, help me. Help me where I am. Help me in this economy. Don't let this economy empty your glory. Is somebody praying? Help me, Lord. You are my rock. You are my strength. You are my hope. You are my glory. There is none else in heaven and on earth. That I have beside you. Lord help me. You are the help of the helpless. You are a present help. In time of trouble. Deliver me. From every affliction of the end time. Particularly the affliction in Nigeria. Lord deliver me from it. Exempt my life. Reach out to me from heaven. Give me open heaven. I want to enjoy your mercy. I want to enjoy your favor. I want to enjoy your great grace in life. I know you have it. You are a God of more. You have been good to me. 
Show me your kindness and carry me on the eagle's wing. Don't let me be swallowed by end time affliction. Send help to me, Lord, from heaven and defend your purpose for my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now I'll give you one minute. What is that thing that God must attend to? You have seen the three people I presented. Can you hold God by faith and say, Daddy, look at me in this corner. Do you have debt to pay that is disturbing your life? If God paid up the debt of that woman, Say, Daddy, lift that burden off my life. Are you afflicted by demonic spirit and you know it? That certain strange thing happened to me. Can you say, Father, the deliverer, now set me free. Can you say, prevail by the covenant of the blood against every demonic delay that has tied me down on the spot. Lord, grant me deliverance this morning for I will testify. I will, I will tell your people you deliver me. Remember me, O oh God. Open my eyes to see what you have, want me to do. Open my ears to hear instruction from you. You are more than enough for me. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Father, you more than enough for me. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Daddy, for the grace to share your word with your people again today. You are lifted forever, Holy Spirit. The great teacher in the name of Jesus. I bring all of you under the cover of the blood of Jesus. I declare that by the covenant of the blood, receive the Lord's visitation. Are you there? I command, may the Lord visit you. It's a year you are meant to flourish in. It's a year you are meant to grow in. It's a year when God intends to multiply you. I command now, may whatever has been hindering the manifestation of God's move in your life be blown off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I command the unleashing of God's blessing, Amen. God's visitation, Amen. healing from above, Amen. deliverance from any affliction Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the hand of the Lord be stretched in your direction. That door that the enemy has locked against you is declared open. Amen. God turned that problem to a testimony Amen. for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now receive favor from the Lord. Amen. Receive favor from men Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Within the next 30 days, I declare the Lord will make this year the best year for you. Amen. Receive help from above. In the name of Jesus. I ask that destiny helpers be made to flock around your life. In the name of Jesus. And so it shall be for you. As you go into the week, may the Lord go ahead of you. He will help you in your class. The enemy will not exert upon you. You will not be trapped by the wicked one. I declare you baptized with God's wisdom. I declare baptism of God's understanding. I declare baptism of divine direction. Begin to excel. In your business, excel. In your academic, excel. Advance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I decree you shall be blessed. 
in Jesus' name. 